then we'll just do this. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker, Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. Watching a story about the American bison. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't, hit that subscribe button. Guys, you're gonna wanna follow this because we raise the American bison. It's America's mammal. And I get to be around these awesome majestic animals and guys like this right here, Big Joe. Awesome big old bull. Had an opportunity to get feisty kit and then old flow. So anyways, today, you guys know, for the second time we tried to work Big Joe, didn't work out. Uh, that's a problem with, with animals like this is they've never been through a squeeze chute, they've never been handled before. And in, in that sort of situation, like we were trying to do, or like we, we do every, every fall and every spring to our animals is we run them through a squeeze chute and we vaccinate them we worm them and take care of them that way get them new tags whenever they need it these animals have never been through it so joe wouldn't do it when you're messing with an animal of his size you get a little nervous and uh we just it wasn't worth it he he started acting kind of kind of scary in a way being as big as he is and he had never really been in this way, this situation very many times. So we just scratched it for the second time. It ain't worth it for somebody to get hurt. And we just put him back in here. So third try, what we're gonna do is I bought some Safeguard range cubes. And basically they're just warmer cubes. And you can use this. It, it's made for uh, dairy or beef cattle. Um, they even make pellets for, for smaller animals like sheep and goats. And this is another way that um, you can worm your animals if you aren't able to run them through a squeeze chute or anything like that. And the other good thing about why I feel comfortable about this is because first of all, we've got to get these cubes in this big fella. We, we've got to get them in him. The females got the wormer, the big Joe still hasn't got it. So here's the deal. The positive thing about this and why I got these cubes is kind of a last resort. I don't want to dart him. You can dart these animals. I really don't want to do that. Um, I can actually see when they eat these cubes and know that they're ingesting them and that they're actually going through their system and they're being wormed. Here's the positive thing is he's already had these before. I know the previous owners fed it straight out of their hand hey buddy so something else i didn't mention i was going to do today kevin and i've been doing some fence building and made a little lot i've got the other herd pinned away um today i'm gonna let out big joe and the ladies we got a small lot here and um i'm gonna let them out and give them a Give them some room to run a little bit. We'll see how it goes. I'm kind of excited to do this, but also I'm a little nervous. Um, uh, it's always a good test of your fence. Anytime let bison out, they always check your fences. They check uh, the corners and uh, just want to make sure you're doing your job. And so we're going to let Big Joe and the ladies out here. I just hope I can get them back in with feed. <laughs> we'll give this a go and uh, try it. So wish me luck. just don't think they get or understand that the gate is open down there because they never hardly been out of this pan besides when we tried to work them. so they're a little confused i don't know if i should push them or just let them go they'll just figure it out that's probably safer right probably a lot safer with you big bruiski big bruiser
so the goal is this is one of our smaller lots here next to the silo lot but the goal is to down in the main pasture it's a pretty decent sized lot here we're gonna divide it up because the goal is to eventually do some rotational grazing which is what i wanted and then when we had an opportunity to get big joe and the two ladies things changed a little bit obviously the main reason is because we can't have big joe and we can't have dunbar in the same place so we're changing it up a little bit and we are we're still gonna be able to do this uh rotational grazing we got some things to figure out but i want to get them on more ground and especially when grazing season comes um, march or may i want to be able to get these guys out on some grazing but we just can't have dunbar and we can't have big joe touching noses that's the main thing we've got to be able to get these guys on some grazing land without dunbar and joe touching noses so well, I think we're going to be able to get it set up to where we can have the big herd in one lot and Big Joe and the ladies in another lot. Try to do some rotational grazing. Still got some more fence to build, but uh, that's the next big project. And if we're doing that, that means we're going to have to install some water systems, which is my other big project. Lots of projects that I need to do. And so once we get the water system established, get the fence built, I will be able to do some rotational grazing. And hopefully by that time, um, these guys will be able to do some grazing. So still have some more. We got some couple months to go. We still got to get through winter and uh, wait till that green grass starts showing up in April and May. And these guys will be grazing. Of course, Dunbar's not happy. Shocking. Guys, just to give you a size of this bull, these are six and a half foot tall T-posts. They're driven in the ground, maybe a foot or so. So this is at about my chin level and I'm six foot. So his hump is just over that fence. If you're at Yellowstone National Park, do not do this. My animals are different than the ones out in Yellowstone or places like Custer State Park. Mine have spent a lot of time around humans. Maya, what do you think? Yep, that's what I thought. I did too. Okay, since I have Big Joe and the two ladies out here in a lot, I'm gonna go ahead and try to see if they will eat these. Safeguard cattle cubes. Um, like I'm pretty sure that they had at their uh, previous place. We'll see how this goes. They're just like mine that I normally feed the bison, but mine are just 14% cattle cubes hey
so this is a good sign so if this is what we have to do to keep um some warmer and big joe then we'll just do that he obviously likes them it's candy to to my bison but joe is eating them up by the handfuls i need to do a little bit more research and to see actually how much i need to give him now i probably could just go and pour this in his feed trough and that would be fine and he would eat it up but this is uh and this is okay too i know a lot of people can't hand feed their bison especially on big ranches where they don't see people as near as much but if this is what we're able to do then we'll just do this something else i wanted to share with you exciting Kevin and I built uh, another fence. Uh, this is kind of like a big lane, not necessarily an alley, but maybe like a lane. We use field fence. We set our H post, I welded those together, and then came back through and we use, like I said earlier when Big Joe was up here, six and a half foot tall T post. And then we came back with a four and a half foot field fence is what a lot of people call it um, these areas get smaller and smaller and it goes up to i believe this is a six by six inch and this will keep bison in guys now you don't want to work your bison in this obviously because if they get into it or um, get in a fight or smash into it they will kind of bend it up and stuff and you can just repair it but we've got barbed wire always we always put a strand of barbed wire underneath on the very bottom and then if you have room you can we like to do two but we got um this four foot field fence instead normally um i believe it's a little over three feet i don't know the measurements but we got this tall stuff this time and we put one strand up here we like to put two but the way it worked out i think when we build more fence um, it depends on where it's at. We really had to try to keep this closed. That's when we put the, fin the field fence up because we're gonna be able to move the bison in and out. So this is where it comes from. There's where Big Joe and the ladies are normally in their lot. They're out here hanging in this one right now. They would come down and it'd run through here and this is where we actually work the bison. So we're gonna be able to move bison around if we need to pull them out of the big pasture, we're gonna bring them in here. And this lot too, where my main herd is right now, we're gonna put up some panels here over this big concrete slab. And we're gonna be able to move the bison in and out by using this lane right here. But if you ever wanna build fence, that's one of the big questions I always get for bison is can you just do barbed wire and field fence yes you can you can do it right here and you can see right there that's a probably smaller average size cow which is what flow is joe his back was up to here at least we hung a gate here a 12 foot gate so we can take them into this lot or run them through here but you can do this this will work for bison you won't want to work your bison in something like this, but you'll be able to at least keep them there so that they can graze and do their thing. If you're going to get rough and rowdy with bison, you got to have it secure like our main area here where it is all completely piped up from here to here. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. It's uh, it's exciting to get these guys finally out after doing some fence building to get Big Joe and Kit and Flo out here and uh, get them a little bit more room. That's exciting. And then uh, it's always good to see Big Joe. And the most important thing is that we're taking care of him and trying to get some of these cubes in him with some warmer in him. So trying to get that taken care of and make sure that he's healthy. So thank you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed to us,
You can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on Facebook. Guys, we're raising the American bison right here in southern Oklahoma. Yeah. What do you think about that guy? I kind of wonder what he thinks about you, but he's he's been mostly all talk and you've been pretty chill. We got to keep this safe distance between you two. Right?